Well, good morning, everyone. On this slightly better morning, I think spring has finally arrived. Isn't that nice? And today we celebrate Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit into the church and into our lives. A reminder for St Dunstan's that it's the APCM tomorrow with the vestry meeting at 7.15 and followed by the APCM proper. This won't be online and please, if you are on the electoral roll of St Dunstan's, make every effort to attend if you can. So starting at 7.15 tomorrow. I have a message from Chris Todd about the plant sale that was held yesterday in her garden. She says, a very big thank you to you all who donated, helped, and bought at the plant sale. They raised a massive £310.82, which is extraordinary. She says, it was a great morning and a great team effort. Thank you. And thank you especially to Chris, too, for, for organizing it, running it, getting everything together. Amazing. Next Sunday, there's the 8 o'clock service here as usual, but the 10 o'clock here is the joint benefice service. That's going to happen on each fifth Sunday. It's going to go around. So we have it this time. Then the next fifth Sunday will be at St. Mildred's. The next one after that will be at St. Peter's. And Rosemary Waters from St. Paul's will be preaching. But we do have the 8 o'clock here as usual. And that's about it, I think. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Be with you. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Is risen Welcome to St. Dunstan's this morning on this Pentecost uh, Sunday, and welcome to those of you who are following the service on Church TV. This is a red-letter day in the history of the church, the day when the church was established in the amazing story of the coming of the Holy Spirit to the people in Jerusalem, from which we draw so much inspiration today. Jesus Christ, whom we worshipped, is our crucified, risen, and ascended Lord, and we have walked with him through his journey of love. We have faced the agony of his suffering and death on a cross. We have rejoiced at his bursting free from the bonds of death. We have enjoyed his risen presence with us and his revelation of himself through the breaking of bread. We have seen his return to the throne before which every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that this Jesus is Lord. And now, with the followers of his own time, we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit, his gift to his people, through whom we make Christ known to the world. What God has prepared for those who love him, he has revealed to us through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches everything. In penitence, let us open ourselves to the Lord who has prepared good things for those who love him. Let us sit or kneel for our confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate faults. 
We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We stand for the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray that the Spirit will work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. O God, who has at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through the merits of Christ Jesus, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the reading of God's word. The first reading is from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound... The crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in their own native language. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya, Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors in Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speak about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents to the heavens above, and signs to the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, 
and the moon shall moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's greatest, great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, we have the first fruits of the Spirit grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray, we ought. For that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus spoke to his disciples. When the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me, yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said he would take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of the Lord. May the words of the gospel wipe away our sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you please sit down? The Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. Today, Pentecost, we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit. I think I made an error in my introduction and I said we await the coming of the promised Holy Spirit. We celebrate the coming of the promised Holy Spirit today on this red letter day. This major festival commemorates the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles as you heard in that amazing story in Acts. And... Uh, this followed the momentous events of the crucifixion, the resurrection, the ascension of Jesus Christ. And it marks the beginning of the church's mission to the world. It is big. It is big. Now, a fortnight ago, Archbishop Rowan Williams spoke 
to the Canterbury Christian Aid Group on Zoom to mark the beginning of Christian Aid Week. Some of you heard what he had to say, but I'm going to share with the rest of you and remind you uh, what uh, he had to say. I can't give the whole of his uh, quite lengthy address, I just an extract when he spoke about the spirit of truth which was promised to the friends of Jesus. What he said is this, that at Pentecost we remember that the spirit of truth is what is promised to the friends of Jesus. Jesus returns to the Father at the end of his earthly mission. He sends the Spirit to lead us all into truth. That is, he sends the Spirit so that we may become more real, that we may have more of a taste and instinct of what is real, a taste of truth. Our task as God's people, he said, is to do a little bit of diagnosis of what it is that stops us being real and stops us seeing what is real. He went on to say, most of the time as human beings, including we as Christians, live with a whole lot of fictions and unrealities around us. It does not take all hard work and a long time to work out what some of those fictions are. There is the fiction that each of us is separate, completely independent, or that each community we like or are comfortable with is independent. There is the fiction that we can keep ourselves safe without keeping our neighbours safe. There is the fiction of our superiority to others of different confessions, different faiths, different races or whatever. We could go on. And then he said, but if there is one thing that we have discovered or should have discovered in the last 12 months is that all those fictions are exposed for what they are when we face real, shared human crisis. We have had every opportunity to discover, sometimes very painfully, just how deeply involved we are with each other. We have discovered something of the truth about righteousness, what sort of beings we are, and what sort of beings our neighbours are, what kind of world this is, and then responding to that truthfully with the generosity of God's own response. And then he went on to say, we are on earth to exchange the gifts of life and love with one another and to draw out of each other what is most real and true, to draw out the love, action, the capacity for renewal, the capacity for living together. And so we pray that the spirit of truth who comes from the Father will enable us to testify on God's behalf. Amen. We now stand to proclaim our faith in the words of the Creed, and today we particularly note the paragraph which describes, sets out our faith in the Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, you promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, to hear us when we pray in faith. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, we weave a silence on our lips. We weave a silence into our minds. We weave a silence into our hearts. We close our ears to distractions. We close our eyes to attractions. We close our hearts to temptations. O Lord, the scripture says there is a time for silence and a time for speech. Saviour teaches the silence of humility, the silence of wisdom, the silence of love, the silence that speaks without words, the silence of faith. Lord, teach us to silence our own hearts that we might listen to the movement of the Holy Spirit within us at this time of Pentecost, calling us to service, inspiring us to dedication, to vocation, and to the sense of the depths which are of God. The same spirit that inspired the apostles, Mary, the mother of God, and all the women. They who had scattered like frightened children were now gathering God's children together for Christ. The same Peter who denied even knowing Jesus in order to keep himself warm by the courtyard fire was now on fire confessing that Jesus was the long-awaited Messiah, the Son of the living God. The self-same disciples who were too ashamed to appear at the foot of the cross now boldly and proudly proclaimed God's love seen by Christ's death on that cross. The acts of the apostles had begun. And the acts of the apostles continue down to our own day, God, help us to write new chapters, with each of us playing an important role. The wind still blows. The fire of the Holy Spirit still burns. Each of us needs to let the Holy Spirit in. Each of us has to allow the Holy Spirit to bring about a similar miracle in us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who suffer and mourn in Israel and Palestine in our times. We pray for an end to violence and for peace with justice for all. We pray for the capacity of each to recognizing the suffering humanity and trauma of the other. We pray for refugees and for the displaced and all victims of war poverty, starvation, desperation, and disaster. We pray for those who struggle without a home or comforting familiarities and are at the mercy of others. We ask that your loving, compassionate presence can be found in the pain and confusion of displacement and uncertain journeys. And we pray that those whom refugees encounter may be filled with compassion, not hate. 
remembering that you, Lord, were an outcast, rejected and despised, including by the powerful. We pray that your love may enter the dark places of this world and that the spirit of love, generosity and humility may triumph over hate, rejection and arrogance. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Eternal light shine in our hearts. Eternal goodness deliver us from evil. Eternal power be our support. Eternal wisdom scatter the darkness of our ignorance. Eternal pity have mercy upon us that with all our heart and mind and soul and strength we may seek your face and be brought by your infinite mercy to your holy presence. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia. We pray for our churches of St. Dunstan's, St. Peter's, and St. Mildred's. Strengthen Joe, our rector, and all the ministry team. We pray that our churches will find spiritual treasures in their work, as well as material resources to flourish and to engage with our local communities. Come, Holy Spirit, come. We pray that those who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy in this time of coronavirus, uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. You taught us to love our neighbor and to care for those in need as if we were caring for you. In this time of anxiety, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, and to assure the isolated of our and your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And we bring to your loving presence in the silence of this moment the name of someone we know who is suffering. And we bring the name of someone we've lost and who we miss. Be blessed, O oh God, in your doing and your refraining, in your creating and in your sustaining, in your working and in your rest. Quiet at the center of movement. Joy at the center of pain. Peace at the center of strife. Give grace to our families, friends, and neighbors, O oh loving Lord, and hear us when we remember those who have died in the faith of Christ. According to your promises, grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom, rejoicing in the fellowship of Dunstan, Peter, Mildred, Thomas More, and all your saints. We commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the, for the sake, sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lyndon, for your intercessions. Please stand for the peace, a distanced peace, and those following on Church TV, please share your thoughts with us online. God has made one as one in Christ. He has set his seal upon us, and as a pledge of what is to come, has given the Spirit to dwell in our hearts. Hallelujah! The peace of the Lord be always with you.
Let us offer one another a sign of distanced peace. Peace be with all of you. Bless our Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Bless our Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Let us pray. Father, by your Holy Spirit, you keep the church in unity and truth. As we break bread together, may we be one with Christ in faith and hope and love, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right as our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord, this day we give you thanks because in fulfilment of your promise you pour out your Spirit upon us, filling us with your gifts, leading us into all truth, and uniting peoples of many tongues in the confession of one faith. Your Spirit gives us grace to call you Father, to proclaim your gospel to all the nations, and to serve you as a royal priesthood. Therefore, we join our voices with all in whom the Spirit dwells, to proclaim the glory of your name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks? He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again except through him, our great high priest. This, our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Be made one by the power of the Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen.
And now let us pray. Faithful God, who fulfilled the promises of Easter by sending us your Holy Spirit and opening to every race and nation the way of life eternal, open our lips by your Spirit that every tongue may tell of your glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Would you please stand? Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love, with Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven rests on every believer. Strong and weak, women and men, tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, Blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. For 50 days we have celebrated the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over the powers of sin and death. We have proclaimed Christ's mighty acts and we have prayed that the power that was at work when God raised Jesus from the dead might be at work in us. As part of God's church here in Canterbury, I call upon you to live out what you proclaim. And in response to this question, you say, by the Spirit's power, we will. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, will you walk into God's future, trusting him to be your guide? By the Spirit's power, we will. The Lord is here. Today we have remembered the coming of God's power on the disciples and we invite that same spirit to drive us out into the wild places of the world. May the spirit who hovered over the waters where the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. Amen. May the spirit who overshadowed the virgin when the eternal son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. Amen. May the spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost Bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those who you love, the living and the departed, now and forevermore. Amen. And the response to my dismissal is, thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. So let's make a good noise for the people of Canterbury. Filled with the Spirit's power, Go in the light and peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>